horrific to mankind than the curse of slavery. Slavery has very deep roots in the history of mankind, and the African slave trade has been going on for more than 13 centuries. It is still considered a common norm in Arabs because of its history in Arab culture. However, what seems so normal actually lays the foundation of terror that surrounds slavery. The shocking revelations made in this video will truly leave you questioning humanity. The Arab slave trade started before the advent of Islam and continued for more than a millennia. People usually connect slavery with Islam, but it has less to do with theology. However, the Islamic texts don't decline slavery. In fact, some people believe that Muslims can enslave any non-Muslim, but it is not permissible to enslave Muslims. But how did the Arab slave trade actually start? The Arab slave trade started when Arabs invaded North Africa through Egypt in the 7th century. Slavery was practiced in most of the areas that the Arabs conquered in the 7th and 18th century. After the stronghold of Arabs in the African countries, the slave business started booming. People who were in authoritative positions used to present slaves to others as regards. From the 7th century to the early 20th century, the Arab slave trade continued in some form. Historical accounts and references to slaveholding in Arabia, Yemen, and elsewhere are frequent until the early 1920s. A large number of people from Africa were sent to other countries as slaves to work as domestic help, servants, and slave concubines. Arabs used to enslave not only Africans, but people of other ethnicities as well. Even white people were enslaved by the Arabs, but they were considered superior to the black people. White slaves could eventually reach prestigious positions, but this was impossible for the black ones. In the 18th century, the African continent was dominated by Arab barbarians in the north. Islam moved south along the Nile and along the desert roads. In this way, at least 10 centuries of slavery began for the benefit of Islamic countries. As an aside, Bantu people in the Arab world meant black Africans, except Ethiopians, Somalis, and North Sundanese, who were considered Kushi. It is estimated by historians that during the 10th and 19th century, around 6,000 to 7,000 slaves were transported every year to the north for slavery. The slaves had to go through the desert journey that was ruthless and horrendous. According to many historians, a lot of slaves perished during the journey. It is estimated that sound 80,000 slaves died every year before even reaching the slave market. According to scientific studies, three out of four slaves died before reaching the market because of hunger, thirst, tiredness, or diseases. But the inhuman treatment didn't stop there. The Arab slave trade spread south to the east coast of Africa. Merchants were increasingly drawn to the coast to become part of the trade, but when they all settled in one area, there was a lot of competition. So they expanded instead of being together in one area. This extended the slave trade to the south of Zanzibar. In the 18th century, Zanzibar became the center of the slave trade. A massive source of slaves for Arabs was the eastern coast of Africa. This is where the tribe Zang was very much in demand. Arab culture settled along the coast around the 19th century. 700 mixed with the customs of the local people led to the emergence of the Swahili culture. Today's Swahili people are descendants of Arabs who settled in East Africa. As trade expanded, traders brought slaves across the continent to Africa, Asia, and Europe. Africans were generally made to work in agriculture, household work, or as soldiers. It was also a common practice to castrate the male slaves so they don't get intimate with the female slaves and become unable to reproduce. Arabs used to traffic people from Africa and send them to different parts of the world. Some ancient Chinese texts mention that in the 6th century, an Arab general presented two Zom slaves as gifts to the Chinese emperor. It is mentioned in the Chinese chronicles that during the 8th and 9th century, that a lot of African slaves reached China through India. The Arab slave trade boomed the most in now called Sudan. 
Arab leaders had signed a peace treaty with the Sudan Emperor on the condition that they will have to give thousands of Sudanese as slaves every year. This practice continued for many years to come, and this made the slave trade extend to the Red Sea. In Central East Africa, ethnic groups such as the Yao, Makua, and Marabba were at war with each other, and all ethnic groups on the continent traded with those captured in the war. Therefore, the Arab Muslims faced existing structures that facilitated the purchase of slaves for their purposes. There is a lot of debate ongoing on the Atlantic slave trade and the Arab slave trade. According to historians, the conditions of Africans enslaved by Muslim Arabs were very different from those imposed by European Christians. The most fundamental difference between the two is that Africans enslaved by Islam were still considered human beings with certain rights. Furthermore, unlike Christian-based slavery in Europe, where even those who converted to Christianity were bound forever, the children of slaves who converted to Islam Islam were born free. However, the conflict, according to some historians here, is that the Atlantic slave trade lasted for a shorter time than the Arab one. Estimates vary widely based on assumptions, but some historians estimate that as many as 17 million people were sold into slavery in the Indian Ocean, the Middle East, and the North African coast, and roughly claim that 5 million Africans were sold into slavery. Slaves were purchased by Muslim slave traders and transported from Africa via the Red Sea, the Indian Ocean, and the Sahara Desert between 1500 and 1900. Captured slaves were sold in slave markets throughout the Middle East. The human trade accelerated as superior ships brought more trade and the demand for labor on local plantation properties increased. Eventually, tens of thousands of prisoners were captured each year. In the 10th century, Arabs established trading settlements on the Swahili coast and continued to trade there for centuries. Then, in 1497, the Portuguese exploded in the Indian Ocean. After discovering the Cape Road around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, the Portuguese conquered these trading centers. Under entering East Africa, the Portuguese found a series of independent cities alongside an Arab-speaking Muslim elite on the coast. Although Portuguese travelers described them as black, they made a clear distinction between Muslim and non-Muslim groups. The relationship was mostly hostile. The Portuguese first appeared as explorers and remained as conquerors. In Operation Tornado, they took control of the sea lanes and many lands on the coast of East Africa, the Indian Ocean, the Persian Gulf, and the Spice Islands. The campaign was well executed. Naval battles against great odds, siege victories against mighty walls, and captured Portuguese cities against large and well-equipped armies are highlighted. And it is a campaign that most historians unfairly ignore. Nor. It was an invited sphere of influence rather than colonialism in the modern sense. A wealthy Zanzibar aristocrat invited an Omani merchant prince to settle in Zanzibar instead of conquering Zanzibar. In the first half of the 19th century, the local people looked upon Sultan Basidi as a powerful merchant prince whose protection of their island was in their interest. Many local people today still insist that the native people of Zanzibar invited Syed Said, the first Busaidi Sultan, to their island. Developing patronage and patronage relationships with powerful families has been practiced in many Swahili coastal towns since at least the 15th century. It was an invited sphere of influence rather than colonialism in the modern sense. In the Central African Republic, Muslim slave traders began raiding the region in the 16th and 17th century as part of the expansion of the Saharan and Nile slave routes. Their captives were enslaved and transported to ports and slave factories on the shores of the Mediterranean, Europe, Arabian and Western Hemisphere, West and North Africa, or South of the Ubanki and Congo Rivers. Historian Walter Rodney notes that bilateral trade agreements between numerous ethnic groups throughout the proposed Zinzi trade network characterized much of the process of acquiring personal property, often involving servants, is not. Historian Patrick Manning writes that although the Oriental or Arab slave trade is sometimes called the Islamic slave trade, religion was not the driving force behind slavery. He also argues that such use of the term Islamic trade or Islamic world presents Africa as outside of Islam or as an insignificant part of the Islamic world. 
According to European historians, Islamic missionaries in Africa were often cautious because of its effectiveness in reducing potent slave stock. British explorers led to Stanley Livingston were the first Europeans to penetrate the Congo Basin and discovered the scale of slavery there. The Arab Brigade expanded its influence there and enslaved many people. After European settlement in West Africa, the slave trade in Sub-Saharan became less important. Zanzibar abolished slavery in late 1897 under Sultan Hamad bin Hamad. In late August 1791, slave revolts broke out in present-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic. These two rebellions greatly facilitated the abolition of the slave trade, slavery, and colonialism in Africa. However, it was not until 1873 that Zanzibar Sultan Said Burkesh, under pressure from the British, signed a treaty outlawing the slave trade in his territory. That order was also not executed effectively. It was not until 1909 that slavery was abolished in East Africa. The British colonialization of Africa made slave trade slowly eliminated. It was outlawed in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in 1962. According to experts, slavery still exists in different forms in some Muslim and African countries. An estimated 40 million people are still enslaved worldwide. Hundreds of thousands of people live in Africa. Martyrarian claims to have abolished slavery, but in reality, the situation in North Africa has not changed much. According to a prime journalist, there were reports from Libya of an organized slavery market, and a case of slavery was uncovered in Tanzania a few years ago. 50 to 60 boys were forced to work in a remote area after a mine was found. They lived without pay in camps guarded by armed men. The slave trade in Libya is not a new thing, but it is deeply rooted in its history and traditions. It is extremely unfortunate that these facts are either concealed or underpresented in Africa and Arab history. The terror faced by the African people, just because of their ethnicity, is something that should be remembered and told. These facts should not go unacknowledged, as it has traumatized millions of Africans, and they find it difficult to survive even today. If you want to know more mind-boggling facts about history, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to comment below what we should talk about in our next video.